Now, one of the very best gaming smartphones and admittedly one of the most expensive gaming smartphones of 2021 has just landed, the Asus ROG Phone 5. And if you are at all serious about your mobile gaming, then it's pretty much a must buy with its beefy performance and its fantastic array of dedicated gaming features. I already did you a full unboxing where I banged on about the specs, took a tour of the UI, checked out the cameras, all that good shares. And now it's time to really test the ROG Phone 5's gaming chops to see if that Snapdragon 888 chipset can handle the most demanding Android games out there, check out the thermals with stress tests and see how fast the gaming actually drains the battery. Basically, I'm going to punish the ROG Phone 5 until one of us breaks down and says, right, that's enough. So here's my full in-depth Isus ROG Phone 5 gaming review and for more on the latest greatest tech please do pause, subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now first up it's definitely worth pointing out there are actually three different SKUs of the ROG Phone 5. This is the most expensive model at 999 euros. It packs a whopping almighty 16 gigs of RAM as well as 256 gigs of storage. You can drop the price 100 euros to 899 and still get a very respectable 12 gigs of RAM which should see you through pretty much any Android title you throw its way. Otherwise for 799 euros you can get the base model which comes with 8 gigs of RAM and also halves the storage to 128 gigs. And just to further complicate matters, Asus has also decided to release more expensive Pro and Ultimate versions of the ROG Phone 5 which I'll cover at the end of the video. But anyway, no matter your choice of ROG Phone 5, you do get a ruddy gorgeous Samsung AMOLED display custom made for Asus, boasting always on HDR, impressive colour accuracy and a powerful top brightness. This is an ideal way to take in the lush visuals on titles like Genshin Impact. Those annoying f***ing slimy c*** have never looked so gloopy. You've got up to 144Hz refresh rate support for titles like Vainglory, Poop Die, Love Balls and balls? Question mark? And the ROG Phone 5 certainly delivers a silky smooth graphical experience. And it's also a very responsive display as well. The ROG Phone 5 has 300Hz touch sampling, which is ideal for competitive online games the likes of Call of Duty and PUBG. Every single swipe or tap of that screen is instantly registered by the game, so there's no latency that could potentially mean the difference between rounds and victory and mopping up your own brains off the floor. On the audio front, you once again have a front-facing stereo speaker setup here on the ROG Phone 5, which I found was absolutely fine for, you know, again, for your competitive online blasters and the likes of Call of Duty. Uh, it offers a really strong stereo surround sound style effect, despite the fact that obviously you're not wearing any headphones or anything. And they're actually bigger speaker chambers than previous ROG Phone generations as well, so a more powerful sound. You've got Bluetooth 5.2 support on here, had absolutely no problems with latency or anything using that. You've also got a dedicated headphone jack though for when you really really want to get plugged in and get that zero latency and really nice sound and audio. You do have an ESS Sabre quad DAC bit of action on here as well and again nice beefy audio. Whether you're gaming or just listening to some tunes it's audio the way it's supposed to be heard. I dove a bit more into the audio side of things in my unboxing video so go check that out if you want to know more. If you want to, you can spaff some more cash Asus's way for their new headset, the spunkily titled ROG Cetra Core 2, which boasts a durable but pleasingly light aluminium design, complete with ear hooks and some nifty cable controls. And the sound quality from these things, considering the size of them, is definitely pretty damn impressive. Even the bass is particularly punchy as well. Again, whether you're gaming or just kicking back with a bit of metal, rock, dance, whatever. So that's the sound and vision side of things, but let's get on to the really meaty part of this gaming sandwich, the performance. What you get packed into the ROG Phone 5 is that latest Snapdragon 888, the most powerful Qualcomm chipset you can get right now, packed into a smartphone, backed in this case by 16 gigs of RAM. And as you can see there, some very strong benchmarking on the likes of Geekbench 5. Unfortunately, I can't run Antutu scores on the ROG Phone 5 because this is pre-launch, uh, so that's all blocked. And of course, naturally, this being a gaming smartphone, you've got plenty of control over the actual performance. If you dive into the Armory Crate, this is where you'll find all of the, uh, the settings that you can play around with before you load up a game. X mode is the default uh, setup, and it's certainly the one to go for if you favor performance over battery life. It boosts the CPU and the GPU performance for higher frame rates and a much more stable frame rate as well, especially when you're playing over a long, long period. It also gives you the highest possible refresh rate, 144 hertz, and it boosts all of the sensitivity uh, levels all the way up to max. In those settings you can also play around with the actual lighting effects uh, that you have on the go when you're gaming in this mode and you've actually got dual colour effects as well which you can set up now. This makes the ROG Phone 5's arse that little bit sexier. And I found that when I was gaming with the X mode active this produced very strong performance indeed as you would kind of hope and expect. So for example in Genshin Impact set to the highest possible detail settings it tends to stick to that 60 frames per second limit with only the occasional very short 
very slight dip in frame rate, so you'll occasionally notice a brief little judder, for instance, when you're charging across the world map. But this never impacted the gameplay, certainly, and the CPU usage on the ROG Phone 5 never rose above 50%. Likewise, good beefy bit of Call of Duty action on high detail settings and the highest frame rate settings maintained a stable frame rate over a lengthy gaming session. And Vainglory, one of those titles that supports the high refresh rate, held a median frame rate of 126 frames per second throughout a full match with pretty much zero fluctuation throughout as well. And it certainly looked silky smooth from start to finish. So yeah, definitely that Xbox gets a massive thumbs up from me. You've got some other presets as well. The other one that's worth focusing on is ultra durable and we'll get to that when we get to the battery tests. If you're a proper control freak, then Isus has you covered there as well. You can dive into advanced. You can actually uh, play around with the uh, CPU performance limits, the GPU performance limits, the temperature control, all that good stuff. Personally, I don't really find it uh, necessary to dive into that sort of level of control when you've got some perfectly good presets like that X mode. As far as the thermals go here on the ASUS ROG Phone 5, well, ASUS has tinkered with the likes of the 3D vapor chamber. Uh, you've got the usual graphite sheets in there to help dissipate the heat as well. And overall, I found the cooling system was very effective indeed. When I was uh, using the X mode to play a good bit of Genshin Impact, I found that the internal temperature rose from the sort of low 30s to around the 45 to 46 degree mark after around sort of 20 to 25 minutes of gaming, but then it hovered around that temperature not rising any further. And I found that certainly, yeah, that glass panel on the back end of the ROG Phone 5 was starting to get quite warm after about 20 to 25 minutes of non-stop gaming, uh, but most of the heat is concentrated around the centre of that panel away from your hands when you are doing a bit of gaming in landscape mode. And even towards the centre, to be fair, it wasn't getting troublesomely toasty, just quite warm. Now for really hardcore users who want to be gaming all afternoon, especially with the phone plugged in, there's the optional Aeroactive Cooler 5 accessory. This can blast more air at the region where the CPU is housed and lower the CPU temperature up to 10 degrees compared with just using the standard built-in cooling system. And I certainly found that when gaming on the likes of Vainglory and Genshin Impact, uh, the temperature didn't rise above around sort of 35-36 degrees over the course of a match or a good couple of missions. And even better, this generation of the Aeroactive Cooler also includes two physical pads on the back end which can be mapped to any on-screen game controls. Now when you're in the middle of a game you can yank out the very handy game gd menu just with a quick swipe of your finger from the left edge like so. And this gives you fast access to a freaking huge number of different tools and features. Simple things like just boosting or uh, lowering the screen brightness when you need to. You can stick on uh, no notifications as well if you don't want to get pestered by messages and calls from the boss or your other half or whatever. You can access real-time info to see how the ROG Phone 5 is coping with the pressure. So for instance, you can check out how the battery life's doing, how the internal temperature is holding up. And if there's any of those Game Genie features you find that you use over and over again, you can use the quick control feature to actually add them straight onto your on-screen controls. So for instance, let's say you're constantly trying to screenshot a bit of action, then you can add that on. And then this will add your button on, just place it wherever you want. You can change the opacity of that button and also the size of it as well. And then in the future, when you tap that button, thy will shall be done. And if you do actually play competitively as well, you'll be interested to hear that ASUS has added on an eSports mode for the ROG Phone 5 too. This can turn on the likes of Do Not Disturb, because obviously you don't want your mum messaging you in the middle of a bloody tournament, prevents accidental touches. And it will also disable some special features as well, like the air triggers, which are quite often outlawed in these eSports tournaments. But one of my favourite features that you'll find in that Jim Ge Jim Gini? One of my favourite features that you'll find in that Game Genie menu is the Air Triggers feature, which basically refers to the two ultrasonic shoulder buttons. The setup is very easy. You can map each shoulder button uh, to a very specific on-screen control just by dragging these little icons over them. And not only do they support uh, just straightforward tapping, uh, but you can also swipe each button to do something differently. So for instance, we can swipe the left one to get a bit of jump action on the go. And now as you can see, just a quick swipe of that shoulder button will make the bugger jump. It's in this menu where you also set up those two uh, pads on the Aeroactive Cooler, which I mentioned earlier as well. And you can also set up some motion controls if you like. So it'd be quite handy again if you've got so many features that you find you're fumbling around for those on-screen buttons. So you can uh, tilt the phone forward, backwards, all over the place. You can also give it a good hard shake to, for instance, activate a special power. But I find that I'm usually shaking the phone about all over the bloody place whenever I'm playing a game anyway, especially when I get all stressed. So I, I tend to stay away from the motion controls. You also have the option of that ROG Kunai 3 gamepad if you want the most comfortable gaming experience. This can be used as a standalone joypad, which works well when coupled with that Aeroactive Cooler accessory with its handy kickstand. 
Alternatively, you can also attach the two individual bumpers directly to your ROG 5 using a special case, and this gives a Nintendo Switch style setup, albeit a ridiculously freaking wide one. Alternatively, Asus is also going to be offering a ROG clip, which basically just clips onto your phone, and then this can be used to attach the phone directly to an Xbox One, a PlayStation 4, or a Stadia controller. No support for the new Sony and Microsoft consoles just yet, unfortunately. If you want to provide a colourful bit of in-game commentary, but you can't be asked to actually wear a headset, well, no worries. You've got a quad mic setup here on the ROG Phone 5, which would also come in handy for your Skype call, Zoom, and all of that good stuff. And you've also got a 24 meg selfie cam on there as well, which again is absolutely fine for capturing your mug while you're gurning and sweating up a storm. If you're gaming online, good news is you've got full Wi-Fi 6E support with a triple antenna setup, so you'll get a strong signal however you're holding this thing. You've also got 5G support via the Snapdragon 888's built-in modem. And Asus's hyperfusion feature can automatically select between the mobile network or the Wi-Fi network, whichever is offering a more stable and strong connection. As for your storage, well, I already mentioned back at the start of the video, this is a 256 gig model, but you can get a 128 gig model if you pay 799 euros. There's no micro SD expandability, but that's still plenty of space to download a shed load of games, no worries. And last up, let's check out my battery tests. And the ROG Phone 5 packs in a mighty 6,000 milliamp cell, definitely a, a very recommended feature for a game and smartphone to have. I did try to play Genshin Impact on top detail settings at 60 frames per second with the X mode active to see how fast that would drain the battery. And the answer is pretty f***ing fast. In fact, the battery meter drops almost 1% every minute. Not quite that bad, but I did end up having just over two hours of playtime from a full charge. However, as I mentioned before, if you dive into the Armoury crate, you do have that ultra durable game mode, which just scales back quite a lot of the features in order to prolong the battery life. And that's very handy indeed if you're gaming on the go with no hope of actually being able to plug in the ROG Phone 5 to keep it powered up. And this mode makes a significant difference to the longevity of the ROG Phone 5. So for instance, I played Genshin Impact on those same maxed out settings as before, and the ROG 5 kept on going for twice the length of time versus that X mode, so given just over four hours of use from a full charge. And the phone also heated up slower. However, I gotta say there is a serious impact on the performance when using the ultra durable mode as well. So on those top settings in Genshin Impact, I noticed a few instances where the frame rate dropped to quite laggy levels for a couple of seconds or sometimes longer. And when you get into fights with quite a few beasties on the screen at once, there is definite slowdown here. Although to be fair, that is on the max style graphics on one of the more demanding games out there. If you do find that the battery level is running low, no worries, you can just pull out this little rubber flap here on the edge of the ROG Phone 5 and you can plug in your charger like so and that will keep you powered up and as you can see you can keep on comfortably gaming no worries unfortunately that rubber flap thing is not attached to the phone so that will be quite easily lost if you're not careful and you've got plenty of different battery charging modes here on the ROG Phone 5 as well including the ability to not actually charge up the battery while it's plugged in while you're gaming uh, just to help prevent overheating and uh, potential battery damage. And if you want to know more about the charging tech, for instance, the 65 watt hypercharge abilities of the Isus ROG Phone 5 and all those battery saver and battery charging modes, then definitely go check out my in-depth unboxing video. And that right there is my review of the Asus ROG Phone 5 from a gaming perspective. You've got a bevy of gaming features packed in there. Tons of great optional accessories as well. If you want to get the absolute most out of your games and certainly stand a chance against those bloody 12 year olds who spent the entire of lockdown just playing their one freaking game until they achieve basic godhood in it. But as I mentioned back at the start of the video, there is a ROG Phone 5 Pro model as well, which will be coming in April for 1199 euros. This is basically the same as the standard ROG Phone 5, except you also get a secondary ROG Vision display on the arse end, uh, which you can use to display your very own visual or one of Asus's presets. And you also get that Aero Active Cooler bundled. If that's not good enough for you, you've also got the choice of the ROG Phone 5 Ultimate edition, which is an extremely limited edition version of it for the supremely dedicated fans, no doubt. That will be coming in May for the price of €1,299. Euros. And again, it's the same phone, but this time you get a unique monochrome design with a monochrome vision screen on the back end. You've got 18 gigs of DDR5 RAM, not just 16 gigs. Clearly that two gigs will make all the friggin' difference. And this will also feature two additional rear touch zones for even greater control. Oh, and apparently this also comes with the Aeroactive Cooler plus an ultimate fan gift pack, da -da -da -da, which includes a cap, some badges, even a towel, apparently, so you can wipe yourself off when you get all sweaty and disgusting. I mean, if, if you're actually playing mobile games to the point where you're perspiring to that sort of level where you require a towel to mop yourself off, 
maybe think about taking a break. But anyhow, there you go. That's enough for me banging on. What do you guys think of the ROG Phone 5? Are you tempted? Go check out my unboxing video for a look at the camera tech and all the other bits, the ROG UI slash Zen UI uh, software features as well. And if you're still with me and you haven't done so already, please do poke subscribe and ding that notifications bell. It means the world. And have yourselves a lovely friggin' rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.